everyone to this, our online service. Obviously, with the lockdown, we can't come into church for worship during this second lockdown, but we are now reverting back to what we did previously and having online services for Sundays. So welcome to this, our first online service for November. And we will have Lynn and Bob doing our readings. Colin will be leading us in the intercessions and we'll have Bryn leading us in our act of remembrance. The first reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 to 18 and is entitled Believers Who Have Died. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, starting at verse 1. At that time the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. 
The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both you, us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet. And the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you. Well, here we are again in another lockdown. They call it lockdown 2.0. I think the 2.0 is to try and help us think of this as a new and an improved lockdown from the first one. But it is different to the first one, isn't it? There's no novelty factor. There's no warm weather or bright spring sunshine. There's no enjoying a slower pace of life or being outside in the fresh air. This time it feels harder to do. This time it feels as if it's going to be tougher. After eight months of all the COVID restrictions and the precautions, we feel more tired, more wearied by it all. How have you prepared this time? I see in the news that there's been a surge of buying in the shops, people trying to get their Christmas shopping in early. There's been a rush to the hairdressers there's been throngs and gatherings in pubs and restaurants having that last meal and that last social get-together before it all stops. These are all practical things, but what about the spiritual and the personal things? What about getting ready by making time to slow down? Time for yourself, time for self-care, and time for God. They're important too. Our gospel reading today about the wise and the foolish virgins, the wise ones, they were getting ready. They prepared by having those extra jars of oil for their lamps. But parables aren't to be taken literally. They are metaphorical. It's not about the practicalities of extra jars of oil. There's a deeper meaning to this, a more spiritual message of being prepared in the waiting. That preparedness or that resilience in the waiting means that we are ready for the arrival. Just as those wise virgins were ready for the arrival of the bridegroom, the parable is telling us that we have to be ready for the arrival of Christ. And when he comes, it will be a glorious arrival just like Paul describes in the Thessalonians reading that Lynn gave us. The challenges, the endurance, the patience that we are called to face in the waiting will all be worth it in the arrival. As we are united with those who have died, and as Paul writes, we will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. 
Paul gives us words of encouragement and of hope for the future. We don't know how or when it will happen, but it will come. We don't know how or when this pandemic will end, but it will pass. God is at work in humanity and through humanity in these tough times of the waiting so that we can celebrate, witness and give thanks to God in the good times of the ending or the arrival. Today is Remembrance Sunday, another reminder of that attitude of spiritual preparedness and resilience in the waiting. In the tough times of war and conflict of suffering so that we can give thanks for the sacrifices made the patience and the endurance born and we can give thanks now in the good times in the times of relative peace and the symbol that we wear at this time is the poppy it's worn by so many people it has such meaning such history such heritage for me, the poppy symbolises three things. It's a symbol of recognition. It's worn in memory of all those who gave their lives and made great sacrifices in past conflicts. It's also a symbol of resilience. The seeds of the poppy lie dormant in the ground for weeks, years at a time. The seeds only germinate grow and come into flower when that soil has been disturbed, when the ground around them has been uprooted and shaken and churned up. Then the seed comes to the fore. Then the plant flowers. They flower and thrive in times of trouble and in chaos. That flower, so thin and delicate and fragile, still stands tall. The bloom is still colourful and bright. If that isn't a sign of resilience, I don't know what is. And the third symbol for me, the third meaning, is a symbol of hope. Hope for the future when we enjoy peace in our world. When all of creation, all of humanity are united under Christ. Where difference and disagreement will not matter. The poppy can have other meanings too. What's your particular meaning? What do you think of when you see or wear the poppy? If you want to, there's a lovely guided meditation prayer printed in our weekly sheet this week, which you can access on our website or on a church near you, or you could pick up a hard copy when you come to church for private prayer on Sundays or on Wednesdays. Think of the poppy when you wear it. However you look at it for Remembrance Sunday, however you prepare and approach this second lockdown, I pray you make time for yourself and make time for God. I pray that your preparedness in the waiting is not just on the practical things, but on the personal and spiritual things too. Amen. The blessings which came from heaven, from the Father, when the true living Son was born, be with us at all times. And the blessing which God spoke over the whole human race, be with me always. Amen. Merciful Father, continue to guide and support all those who work in your name, who strive to make this world a better place. Bless our church and may it continue to be a place of peace, a place of loving security, where people can gather to praise your name and find companionship living as you taught us as a family, all together through faith in Christ Jesus. In our Anglican cycle of prayer, let us remember and give thanks for the Church of the Province of the West Indies, and ask that God continues to guide and provide for the Primate and Bishop of Jamaica and the Cayman Islands, the Most Reverend Howard Gregory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Today is Remembrance Sunday. A time for us to remember and show our respects for all those who have sacrificed their lives so that we can live in freedom. We also remember all whose lives have been cut short or forever changed by conflicts throughout the world. We ask our caring Father to bless and protect all refugees. 
We pray that the world's leaders listen to and follow the example of our Lord Jesus Christ and put an end to war. Conflict is something some of us have seen firsthand. While some of us prayed for the safety of loved ones far away, serving their countries, relying on letters home for news. Let us ask our merciful Father to comfort the friends and families of those who are in the armed forces. Let us pray for and talk of an end to war. May God grant us a peaceful life and may we forever be guided by the teachings of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray to our Lord to watch over all those in authority. There have always been moments of crisis, times of hardship, and it is in these events that we look to each other and our God for comfort and support. We ask those in authority to do all that they can to care for us. Today we ask our Father to guide those who hold the reins of power to ensure that their focus is on the governance of our nation, to care for everyone. Care so that poor children are fed, care that families who are fleeing war in search of a better life are protected and care that resources are not wasted, but money is spent fairly for the provision and safety of us all. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now Bryn will lead us in the act of remembrance for our church and the two-minute silence. They shall not grow old, as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them.
When you go home, tell them of us and say, For your tomorrow we give our today. And now we come to our final blessing. And this is the blessing normally said at services on Remembrance Sunday. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the queen, the commonwealth and all people, unity, concord and peace. And to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you all always. Amen. Amen.